Hello, this is Patrick W. Crawford in Muak Productions, and this is a short demo of the Agario rig used in my previous couple animations based on the game Agar.io, or Agario, or whatever you want to call it. So this is available for free on BlendSwap, so get it now. Alright, so this is exactly what you will get when you download it on BlendSwap. A little description over here, and here's the main rig, so we'll focus on that, maximizing this first. Alright, so this is the basic rig, so if I look around, uh, you have a couple basic components. So the main thing is here, is you have both a root bone, which controls and moves everything around, as well as this main bone here, which works for just the body, it's the body bone basically. And so when I'm animating, this is typically what I use to move the rig around. Obviously it works for rotation, scaling, rotate, you know, all that. Um, same as with this, I just often like to have a secondary redundant main bone, so ignore this one down here if you want, but this is the main one. So, uh, a couple key features of this guy is that you have, for example, a couple properties over here. So in the end menu, if you go to the bottom properties, you have something that allows you to set how much it is spherical. So if I slide this to the right, it'll get slightly more spherical, not a perfect uh, globe or circle, but uh, slightly more, so it's not just flat. Then you also have something to control the color. So if I go into rendered view real quick, you notice right now it is um, purple. Um, you'll actually notice that if I were to select this mesh, just the mesh, and duplicate it, ignore the deformations for a moment, it's rather strange, I know. Um, but if I duplicate it several times, you'll notice that the color changes. That's because by default, the material is set to actually have a random color applied, which is quite useful. But I can with this property, again, it's on this uh, main bone here, I can set the color explicitly by having it set to a value other than zero. And it goes from zero to one. So I do like 0 0.5, they should all end up being the same color, in this case, red. If you do you know, any other color, it would change accordingly. So this is actually setting the hue value if you look into the, the nodes themselves. So that's a very useful thing. Um, again, we'll just put that back to zero, and I will delete these frightening other shapes. All right, so back to the rig. So um, I will actually also clear out everything. So I'm going to select everything, uh, hold Alt and G, Alt and R, and Alt and S, just to kind of reset the rig as a whole. Um, so typically, when you're doing the different sizes of the rig, so as like the character is perhaps moving around. What I'll typically do when it gets larger is just scale the root bone. So you know it is set up perfectly so that it will stay on the ground perfectly. So you don't have to worry about that scaling wrong way or bleeding through in or out of different scales. So that's you know specifically set up so it's working well in that sense. In terms of facial controls, this is your main control here, this kind of protruding bone, and it um, will actually create the mouth. So if I open this, you see that a mouth kind of shows up. And that is actually done by a shape key. So if you notice here, the mouth kind of goes inwards, but as I move this in, the shape key goes back to zero. So that when the mouth is completely closed, you can see through the mesh itself without it, like seeing that there's a mouth, which would look awkward because it is a transparent shader. But if you were to open up, then it would start to appear and then you could you know, obviously see it there. But this is how you can actually get a character to consume something. So in the animations I use to make it actually consume something, what I would do is in addition to rotating this bone around, I would actually dislocate it some just with the G and have it kind of chomp down like that a little bit. So that's just a convenient tip. Um, in addition to sort of that control here, you also have these individual mouth controls. They don't always line up perfectly, um, but they do for the most part. So if I just like, for example, move that up here, you can move this around, you can kind of scale it a little bit. Um, it can, you know, just modify the basic shapes. It's not terribly advanced, but it gets the job done, of course. And so, for example, when he's scooping something up, I would have this bottom one go down farther so we could actually consume like one of the little food gems, for example. As far as the eyes, it's pretty basic. You have um, one thing here which you basically control with translation, so G, and that will control the different um, eye shapes. So if you just move on the X axis, it will kind of do the top eyelid from a neutral to mostly closed position. Again, I never actually had the need to make them close all the way, so it's not perfectly set up like that, but for most purposes, it should be fine. And then for the other axis, the z-axis, it does the bottom eyelids. And if you do both at once, obviously you can kind of, you know, do other shapes, nice like that. And obviously this is for individual controls here. 
Uh, in addition to that, you have uh, like eyebrows for some extra, you know, as needed sort of things. Um, the cool feature about this rig is I have pre-animated influence um, sort of deformations happening. So right now, if I just open this, so you can see the timeline just to understand what I'm talking about. Um, so right now, if I play, it's, you know, staying exactly the same. Nothing's moving. But if I have this bone up here selected and move it upwards, it starts to animate and deform crazy. And so this is, you know, theoretically what it uh, would be when it's like consuming itself or it's combining into another piece or otherwise just kind of wiggling, which happens in the game sometimes. Uh, the way this is accomplished, if I actually go out of the rig and do Alt-H, is I have this, uh, basically this lattice that is pre-animated. It has a noise modifier based on the influence of a couple different shape keys. Uh, I have keyframed it or set it so that this stays hidden so it just doesn't get in the way. So if you're looking or wondering why it goes away when you animate, it will just automatically hide itself because it's not you know, needed to be right there. Uh, but that's how that's set up. Beyond that, um, so again, you can also just put this back down and it will kind of reset it. Um, but you can also rotate it around in different ways to kind of deform it differently if you want. So that's useful. Um, yeah, and so like the, one of the last couple things is you have some extra controls for additional rotations, uh, sort of upper body rotations on uh, one of the other layers, I believe there's one more for the uh, top of his like like halo sort of thing but I don't use it too much it modifies just a really small part of the rig and if you really need it there are additional controls down here so you can for example control you know a flap on the side if you need to make him I, if you want to make him one of the characters walk or something you could probably accomplish it using these controls here It'd be a little bit funny um, but the main everything is primarily on that first layer so, and then the very last thing is if I just kind of hide this is of course the text. It's still live editable text. So if I go into here, I can do W equals team. Um, because it's still live text, sometimes the deformation or the actual geometry is not ideal. If you want this to be really production ready, you would clean up this geometry and then uh, you know perhaps modify the way that it's projecting. Um, but right now the way it's set up is it's using a shrink wrap with a nearest point and then a solidify modifier. And it should actually also be attached to the, I believe that is actually already working, so ignore that for a moment. Um, but yeah, so that's how that's set up. Um, yeah, so that's the basics of this rig. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty simple, but it's also pretty powerful and flexible. And if you want to make your own 3D Agario animations, I recommend using this rig. All right, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or issues, definitely comment below or reach out to me. And until next time. Muak.